Greetings, I'm Berent, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. We're beginning our playthrough of Machina Arcana. Now we did an intro and setup video last time, but this time we're gonna actually begin our adventure. Now before we do, there's a couple things I wanna talk about. The first thing is this symbol right here. In the last video during our intro and setup, I talked about it as being like a when revealed effect or something like that. This symbol right here means enters play ability. We have to make sure we get all these right because a lot of this has to do with the way certain things interact in the game. So this is on entries, enters play ability. So in our entry play ability, we're gonna put an entry token down. We've already done that. It's right here. So we've set it up exactly correctly, but I just wanna make sure you understand what that symbol is because we're gonna be seeing that a lot in the game. The next thing is one of the comments I got from Eric is he wanted to know if this is the second edition of the game. Yes, this is the second edition of the game. It's got a little bit different components. It's made, their main difference is a lot of this stuff has newer art and color. But if you're interested in knowing everything about the difference between the first and second edition of this game, please go check out the Dungeon Dive. He did a great review on this game, and I'm going to put a link to it in the description below as well. Go check that out. He actually shows you the differences between the second edition and the first edition. Also, people are wondering if this is the Kickstarter version. Yes, it is. And is it the Deluxe Edition? Yes, it is. And how did I know? That's a great question. Now, in this game, it comes with five different scenarios. It comes with the one we're doing. It also comes with the Statue of Despair, and it also comes with the Beast. Now, those are the ones from the actual game. It also came with these, the Reoccurrence and also Geometry of the Void. These were the two that were specific to the Kickstarter when it talked about the Deluxe Edition. So mine came with five different scenarios. The base box only comes with three. Also, some of the cards from the expansion are going to have symbols. This one right here has a symbol right here denoting that it is gonna be going with one of the expansion scenarios. It's one of the items from that scenario. So there's a whole bunch of things like that that have this symbol. So these are specific to that Kickstarter scenario that I have that was part of the expansion. So the Deluxe and the Core Box both get shipped together in the same box, but once you get it, you can determine if you have it by looking at those things. Also, it does come with this handy dandy little sheet here that explains all the things that are part of Recurrence and Geometry of the Void that you're gonna find in your box if you decided to add that as part of the Kickstarter. I hope all that made sense. So please go check out the Dungeon Dive. He did a great review and you can see the difference between these. Now, are you excited to see if our explorers can make it through? horror under the ice or are they going to fall to the monstrosities that are plaguing this environment to find out i need you to meet me at the co-op shop Now we're going to go ahead and move into our explorer phase. But before we do, I want to show you this document right here. This is from Machina Arcana. This I got straight from the creator. He actually was able to give me a link to their player's guide. It is right here and it's fantastic. It goes through every single one of your explorer's actions that you could do along with all the other phases like the spawn phase, the horror phase are all found here as well. And of course it's two pages and on the other page is the monster phase. It's going to talk about all the rules that have to do with attacking and going through the monster. Now, of course, these are very simplistic rules ba considering the rule book is so big. I recommend going to some of those rules if you want to have more ideas of how they do it. But if you've read the rules and you're looking for a good player handout, this is the one you want. I'm going to put a link to it in the description below. Of course, there's other ones on Board Game Geek you could use as well, but I'm going to be using this one. And as we go through the very beginning of this game, I'm going to be using a lot of these actions and I'm going to probably read them out so you understand how they work. But as we get going, I want to show you how fluid this game can be. So I'm not going to be using this as much as time goes on. 
So let's go ahead and choose an explorer to activate. Once you activate an explorer, you have to continue with that explorer until they are done. You can't go back and forth, but you can choose which one wants to act. You don't have an actual order. So in this case, some of the things we might want to try to do is go to these chests because we're able to get some items from there that we can be able to use against the horrors. Also, we have a workbench down here. This workbench, we can also gain some items from as well. This is a recharge station. It'll help with getting back stamina and health. And also we have these event spaces in the corners. These are gonna be able to help us by gaining cards that might benefit us in this scenario. Of course, you kinda of wanna stay away from the spawn points because they're not all that great. All right, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with Artemis. He's gonna be the first person to go and he can move as many places as he has stamina. Every explorer that we have starts with six stamina. So he's gonna move one, two, three, and our explorers can move orthogonally and diagonally. So you can kind of move anywhere you want around the map. And of course, this right here is a door. All the doors are open when you see a tile, but if you want to sh shut them, you have to use stamina. I believe it's two stamina to shut a door. So he's gone one, two, three over to there. And then now that he's made it over here, I think we're gonna use an action to go ahead and trigger the event space, which is also gonna cost us three stamina. So if we look here, it says activate event space. It's gonna cost us three stamina. What we're able to do is restore one essence, draw the top card from the Explorer event deck, resolve it in its enters play ability. If it's a binding event, we're gonna place it next to our Explorer card. Otherwise, place it the card face up on top of the destroyed Explorer event deck and put the Explorer token on top of the event space. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So the first thing we're gonna do is take away his stamina. One, two, three stamina to move, and then it costs us three stamina to go ahead and use our event space. So we're gonna take the top card from our event deck, and it says, Soothing Mist. A strange mist begins to form, and at first seems like another foul trick to bring false hope to our quivering hearts. But as the mystical vapors gently cling to us, the area is filled with a sense of relief and harmony. For blissful moments, serenity envelops us, and the path ahead seems much clearer. Restore one health to explorers. Oh, that would have been really good to have if we would have actually had any health that we've lost, but we haven't lost any health. So sadly, we're not gonna be able to take advantage of that. Now that we resolved our event space, we're also gonna gain one essence. And remember, in order to complete this chapter, we have to trigger the chapter space, which is gonna cost us three stamina and three essence. So as soon as we can do that, we're able to move on to the next chapter. Since we've gone ahead and used our event space, we're gonna go ahead and put an explored token on it to show that we've done that. You can only use these things once and then they're gone. Now, how are you going to get more if you keep using all these? Well, you can move off the tile to another tile. That's gonna take two stamina, but then you're able to grab the next tile on the pack of tiles you have and put that down, giving you a whole new board to go ahead and explore. Now we're moving into Jesse's turn. He's gonna start by moving one, two, three. I think he's gonna wanna get some of these chests. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at activating that chest. So it says right here, activate chest. We're gonna first restore one essence. Again, that's really good. We're gonna draw the top two items from the item deck. From those two cards chosen, one you may either destroy or place it on top of the corresponding item deck. Keep the remaining card or give it to an adjacent explorer. You can immediately equip that card if it meets the item type based on your class. A bruiser is a weapon, a gunman is apparel, mystic is artifact, and crafter is any type of weapon. Now we're playing with a gunman and a mystic. So if Jesse picks up an apparel, he's able to auto equip it from a chest. Otherwise it goes in your inventory space and you have to do an inventory action in order to equip these. After that, we're gonna put an explore token on top of the chest. So Jesse's gonna go ahead and lose one, two, three stamina from moving. Then he's gonna use the chest action to go ahead or activate chest and move down three more and gain an essence from that. And then we're gonna go ahead and see what he gets. So Jesse's gonna choose from the decks of cards an apparel card, mainly because we know we can equip it if we really like it. And we're also gonna take a weapon because I think we might be finding some monsters, you never know. So we're gonna go ahead and see what we find. We have found a Fuzz Hamata. When you are hit, attacker loses one stamina and it gives us two defense to our armor. That's really good. And what's this? Arcane Coating. Increase the weapon's arcane attack roll by one. Well, we don't have any weapons right now to attach this to. So we're gonna go ahead and discard that. And I am gonna keep the Fuzzy Hamata. And we're gonna be able to equip this right away because it's for our gunman. 
So we're gonna go ahead and place it right here. And we now have, it looks like one, two, three, four, five defense against physical attacks. That's really good. And that's gonna be the end of Jesse's turn. We're gonna to have to move into the spawn phase. So it says here in the spawn phase, when you would roll in the spawn phase, check for each explorer. So every explorer has to do this. That's a way of being able to scale the game, I believe. We all have to roll this so there could always be monsters on the board based on the amount of players you have. Now as you roll, it's going to say all spawn spaces on your map are destroyed. So first you have to check that. Of course, we have all our spawn spaces are available, which are fantastic. If there is, nothing happens. So if you can manage to get out those spawn spaces, you're not gonna be able to spawn monsters, which would not be too bad, unless you, of course you had to kill monsters. Now it says, then you're gonna roll a game die. Now, of course, if it is lower than the current spawn rate, you're gonna drop the spawn rate, making it more likely to find a monster as you keep rolling. If, of course, you roll higher, you're gonna spawn a monster unless there's four on the map tile. If there is four, you're gonna increase the monster's threat, making it closer to having harder monsters come at you. If, it's, if there are not four monsters, you just go ahead and spawn a monster, and it's written right down here how that works. To spawn a monster, we're gonna draw a card from the monster deck, and then we're gonna place the monster card at the end of the monster queue. There is gonna be a queue as to what the order of who attacks when. Note, the monster's maximum health value on its card and place the exact number of health tokens on the monster card. Place the monster figure on the spawn space closest to you. Then resolve and enters play abilities that the spawn monsters have. Now, of course, when it says closest to you, it is whatever explorer rolled. So if we look at our storyboard here, our spawn rating is seven. So if we roll a seven or higher, we're gonna be encountering a monster. So let's go ahead and roll our die. Now this game comes with a fantastically crafted, look at this really neat die. It's got all these great engravings on it and everything. The only problem is it's kind of tough to see on camera. So we're gonna e remove that and roll this red die. Red dies are easily red on camera. Get it? Red on camera. <laughs> it's a red die. All right, we're gonna roll first. It's gonna be Artemis who's going to roll first. And Artemis rolled a one. So that is not enough to actually spawn a monster. So according to our thing, we're gonna go ahead and move our track down one. Then we're gonna roll again. And it's gonna be Jesse's turn. Jesse's gonna roll and he got a nine. So he did find a monster. And since he rolled higher, we reset our track to what it is written down here. And it's written seven. So we're gonna reset our track back to seven and we're gonna spawn a monster. So we're gonna go ahead and take our first monster and see what we found. Oh, what did we find? We found a Sorrel. A Sorrel, okay, this thing has three armor, two will, two health, and four stamina. Oh my, oh look at this. It takes three stamina to activate its attack and it does two black and two white. Okay, black dice are the better of the dice. Wow, what does it say here? When this monster dies, the attacks three white dice to adjacent units. Oh, it kind of blows up in like a death roll or something. Oh, that's amazing. All right, so we're gonna put it down here in the queue, meaning it will be the one that always activates first until it dies. Also, we're gonna go ahead and put its health down. It has two health, and as you heard it, you're just gonna flip these tokens over until it has none. Now we've gone ahead and put down our monster. Let's go ahead and spawn him. He's gonna be found inside our set of things here. There he is, wow, look at him. He's something else. He's gonna go on the board closest to Jesse. So we could either spawn our guy here or here, and he's gonna be one, two away from Jesse if we spawn him here, and he's gonna be one, two, three, four, five away up there. So we're gonna spawn it down here. It's gonna be there, ready to go after us. That's absolutely fantastic, not fantastic. So that's our spawn phase. We're gonna move into the horror phase. So here's our horror phase. It says, at the start of the horror phase, place all horror markers next to the horror event deck. Then one player rolls the game die. So this is a little bit different from our spawn phase, but after that rule, it's pretty much very similar. It says, if it is lower, we're gonna lower the, the rating by one, making it easier to have a horror event next time. If it is higher or equal to, it's gonna do all these things. It's gonna reset the current horror rating, then increase the monster threat by one, which is how we're gonna be gaining harder monsters. Then we're gonna draw a card from the horror event deck, do what it says, and then place the card face up in the destroyed horror event deck. Now, it also talks about how to increase the monster's threat down here. So 
if we ever get to monster level five, we'll deal with this side. But if not, all you're gonna do is gonna go ahead and increase the monster slider by one. Now, of course, if this ever reaches the end of the track, we're gonna reset the monster threat slider to the first position, increase the monster level by one, which means we're gonna add level two monsters to our monster deck. Also, we're gonna shuffle the monster cards with the corresponding level, like I said, into the monster deck together with the destroyed monster cards. So again, if we look at our storyboard, we're at horror level four. So if we roll a three or lower, we don't have to deal with a horror event. If we roll a four or more, we will. So let's go ahead and pick up our red die and see what we get. We got a zero. Now that's a great time to roll a zero so I can talk about it. A zero in the normal game is going to be a 10. You can play in an easy mode and that can be a zero a straight zero, and you wouldn't actually have to deal with a horror event. It's up to you how you want to play the game. So there are two different ways. You can either make it a zero or a 10. We're making it a 10 because why not? So the first thing we're going to do is raise our threat by one. Next, we get to draw these awesome, not awesome horror cards. And let's see what we found. We have found Invigorating Reprisal. It says, the incessant tide of monstrosity never falters or ceases. There's an eternal horde of terror throwing itself at us. If one is slain, another stronger one merely takes its place. We are exhausted and at our collective wit's end as we wade through the ocean of horror. What now? No, it can't be a sudden pulse throbbed from the walls and invigorated the enemies. We have managed to wound. What will become of us? We're gonna restore one health to monsters. Oh, this is a really good time to get this card because, well, none of our monsters have taken any damage. Now we're gonna move into our monster phase. So we're gonna activate our, what is it? It's a Sorel. He's gonna go ahead and use his movement to try to get to the closest explorer and that's gonna be Jesse. Now it has four stamina, so it's gonna move up to four. Now, of course, we have to remember, it needs three to actually make the attack. So if we can keep this thing far enough away that it has to keep trying to move closer to us, that might be one way to handle this guy until we find some weapons that can actually deal with him. So he's gonna move four spaces. One, two, three, he's gonna move to right here. He wants to try to be orthogonal to your explorers. Now, the only problem is he's not able to stand there because this is considered an action space and all action spaces are considered obstacles, meaning you can't actually stand on them. So we couldn't stand on this or any of these other obstacles, or sorry, action spaces. So we couldn't stand on this one or anything like that. So he's going to be right there, which he means he's still close enough to be adjacent to me. So we could make his attack, but he does not have enough stamina. He used one, two, three to get here, meaning he only has one left, which means his turn is over. So we're gonna move back over into our explorer phase. And at this point, I think Artemis is gonna go ahead and use this workbench. The workbench is gonna cost us three stamina. So here we see our activate workbench. We're able to use it for three stamina. And it says to draw the top three cards from any deck. You can swap any of the drawn cards with an item from your inventory. You can also then choose one, then keep it, or give it to an adjacent explorer. Destroy any number of remaining cards, then place the rest of them on top of their corresponding item decks in any order. Then we're gonna resolve an inventory effect for free. Then we're gonna put an explorer token on top of the workbench. And here's where the workbench becomes really powerful. Look at this, use inventory also costs three stamina and allows us to equip, unequip, upgrade, or augment any number of items. So if we had three items in our inventory and we went to the workbench, we could equip all three of them in one free little maneuver after gaining an item from the workbench. It's such a good place to be. So we're gonna lower Artemis's stamina one, two, three, so we can go ahead and use that workbench and we can grab any three of these cards. Now, normally from a chest, he would be able to equip these, but this isn't a chest, this is a workbench. I can grab three things. We're gonna grab a weapon. We're gonna grab an artifact just because I don't know what they are and I think they're gonna be cool. And we're gonna grab another weapon. We need to find something we can get that thing with. All right, let's see what we found. We have found a heavy javelin. Look at this thing. Two to attack melee for three white dice. Otherwise, we can go ahead and roll, throw this thing an attack for two with two, and we can push it back one space. That's pretty good. What's this? Rot pod. Give one item to an explorer. That explorer can give one item to you. I don't, that doesn't seem all that great. And what's this? Arcane powder. Increase weapons arcane attack rolls by one. Oh, we don't need that. We're gonna discard that one. We're also gonna discard our, uh, what is this? These are arcane things. 
we're not gonna take any artifacts. We're gonna take this javelin. This javelin looks awesome. We're gonna be able to go get that guy. That's my plan. And since this is the workbench, we get to go ahead and equip that straight away. Now, I still have three stamina left, so I can move Artemis. But first, before we do that, we have to put an Explored token down on top of that workbench. Now, we could use this Recharge Station, and I think we might. We're going to use the Recharge Station. It only costs one stamina. Now, our Activate Recharge Station is found right here. It does only cost one stamina. We need to roll the Recharge die. Possible results, restore one health, restore stamina, or nothing happens. Put an Explored token on top after we do this Recharge Station action. So we're going to move Artemis down to two stamina and roll our Recharge die. So this is our Recharge die. We can gain either a health, two stamina, nothing, three stamina, health, or health. So we're hoping for the stamina here because I don't really need anything else. Oh, look at that. We got two stamina. That's fantastic. So we're going to go ahead and give ourselves one, two stamina or up to four. And then we're going to put an explored token on top of that recharge station. Now, sadly, that's still not enough. One, two, three, four to get me over here. But our javelin, we can throw for two at range of two. So if we can go one, two, now we have two stamina left to be able to throw this javelin. Look how much it can attack for. Plus, it can push it one space. Sadly, I'd be pushing it right into Jesse, so that's really not going to help us too much. So let's go ahead and see if we want to do that. Now, the one thing I didn't mention is if we do decide to throw this, this symbol right here means to unequip this item, which means we'd have to spend an inventory action or we have to find another workbench to re-equip this heavy javelin. But I think that's going to be okay. If we can hit this guy, maybe Jesse can go ahead and deal the rest of the damage. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. We're going to go ahead and use our javelin and go ahead and unequip it and put it back in our inventory. So it's going to cost Artemis two stamina to move to where he is, and then he's going to pay the other two to go ahead and throw our javelin, rolling two black and two white dice. I'm then going to unequip the item, so I'm going to put it right back over here into his inventory area. So now we get to go ahead and roll our dice. We get two white and two black. Now the way these dice are read is they have pips on them. So there's two, a one, a two, a one, a zero. There's zeros in here as well. Now the black dice are more powerful than the white dice. So let's go ahead and roll these up and see if we can get him. So we add all our numbers up. We got a three, four, five, six, seven. That's out of control. That's amazing. Now if we look at our enemy here, he only has three defense. So we hit him. No matter by how much you hit him by, you're only going to do one damage. He's got two health. So we're doing okay. We hit him for one health. So we're going to go ahead and take our health point and flip it. So he's only got one left. Now remember, if we kill him, he's going to attack everybody adjacent. So we got to figure out a way to kill him without being adjacent to him. Now it's going to be Jesse's turn. And I've noticed I just forgot. I'm supposed to be putting these down. I forgot to put the explored token on our chest. So I want to make sure we do that. Now, if we look at Jesse's card, he does have a power here that says, I can make a range attack for two stamina, rolling one white die. Now, that doesn't give me a lot of chance to really hit this guy, but if I do, he dies. I can increase the range of my weapons, range abilities by one. Now, that doesn't count for this, because this technically isn't a weapon. And as I shoot this, I lose range during the round. Now, of course, that will reset next round. So maybe we can try to hit him. That would be really good. Now the problem is this enemy has three defense and the best the white dice can do is a two. Now of course you can use essence to adjust your combat roll, but I still don't think the odds are in our, in our favor. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and check out this chest. Maybe we can get a good item that will be able to help kill this guy in the next round. So we're gonna go ahead and use our activate chest action or whatever to go ahead and look at this chest. Now, of course, I can draw two cards and if it's a peril, he's able to equip it. So Jesse's stamina is going to go one, two, three, down to three. And he again can choose two different cards. He's going to choose a weapon and another apparel. If I don't get a good weapon, maybe I can get better armor against this guy. So our apparel is, let's see what it says, trench coat. When one handed is unequipped, Increase your attack rolls by one, and it gives me two defense. Now, I already have something that does that. It gives me plus two defense already. And of course, it has, when you are hit, attacker loses one stamina. So I think we're probably just going to keep that. Now, let's see what our weapon is. It is, oh, we finally got a weapon, Jagged Carpet. Oh, attack one white. That's just as bad as everything else. All right, well, that, 
<laughs> That's pretty bad. All right, well, I am going to take this weapon because I don't have a weapon, and I'm going to go ahead and discard the coat. I don't need it. I'm hoping there's equally better items in here for our mystic. So we're going to go ahead and put this into our inventory. So I'm going to go ahead and put this right up here. Now, I could equip it with three stamina because that would be our use inventory action, but I don't think we're going to do that. We're going to go ahead and do some moving. Now, we're going to go ahead and put an explored token on that treasure chest that we just used. And now we have to determine what we want to do. Now, we can, of course, get two squares away from this guy. He won't be able to attack us, which wouldn't be too bad. So I think moving one, two over here is going to be our best plan. Now, when he does go to activate and there's a person that is equal distance, the way you're going to determine who it attacks is who has fewer health, and that's actually going to be Artemis. So when it all comes down to it, this thing's going to be coming at Artemis next turn, and that's going to be okay because he's got his spear. So we're going to go, actually, maybe going up might be a better plan. Nope, we're going to go right, actually, yeah, I think going up is better, one, two, because then we can come back down and get these chests. I'm sorry, Jesse is out of the picture, but that's going to be okay. We're going to be moving into the spawn phase now anyway. So right now our spawn number is at seven. So let's go ahead and see if we're gonna be spawning any more monsters. We're gonna go ahead and roll for, we're gonna do Jesse first. No, Artemis, Artemis is gonna be first. And he rolled, oh, he rolled a 10, so he's gonna spawn a monster. All right, let's see what lucky, unlucky Artemis found. He has found, what is this thing? A Biaki, oh wow. Oh, it has five defense, but only two against Arcane, which isn't too bad because I believe Artemis has an Arcane ability he could attack with. Now he's got two health and four stamina. Look at this thing. It melee attacks with two stamina and three black dice. That's absolutely amazing. It says here, when any monster dies, this monster teleports to the monster position. Oh my gosh, this thing's going to go all around the board trying to kill me. All right, let's see what it says down here. I thought of the empty shell of a beetle and the soft loam of rotting earth. All right, that's awesome. Now, this creature is going to go second in line, meaning this one is going to move first, then this one. We also have to put two health tokens on our Biaki because that's awesome. Then we need to find our Biaki inside here, and let's find him. Where is it? It is right here. And we're going to put our standee right on top of the board. So we're gonna spawn this Biaki right here because it's one, two, three, four away from Artemis. The other spawn tile is way farther away. And I bet people that have played this game before are now pretty much have been screaming at me the whole time saying, don't throw the javelin, and I did, and now I've got big trouble. But we're not done yet. We have to roll for Jesse to see what happens. And he rolled a five. So that's not enough to make us spawn a monster. We're gonna go ahead and move that track. So our track is gonna go down to six, meaning next turn it will be probably easier to spawn a monster. We're going to be moving into the horror phase next, which means we're going to have to roll four or more and have a horror event. If we get less, that'd be great, and we don't have one. So we're going to roll a die, and we're going to see what we get. We got a six, so that means we're going to have to deal with a horror event. So the first thing we have to do is raise the threat by one. And now we have to draw a horror card and see what it says. It says, shivers. I will scare Scare your fears away, shivers to the nightmares lay. What dreads the corner of thy eye? I'll soothe and kiss with lullaby. And then the darkened clouds appear to douse and drown your in your tears. I will be there with warm embrace that we as one his bliss might face. Oh boy, let's see what it says here. Arcane attack. Explorers, Arcane Attack, Explorers. Why did it hit double? I get attacked twice? Arcane Attack, I have to do this attack against Explorers, then Arcane Attack this against Explorers. Are you kidding me? So I got hit twice? Now this symbol up here, this is one explicitly for this scenario. Oh wow, I get double, this is bad news. All right, so we're gonna have to go ahead and take care of that, that's gonna be terrible. So according to our horror card here, we're going to have to roll a black and two white dice against both of our explorers. Wow, this is out of control. All right, and this is going to be, he's got a three defense against Arcane. So we're going to roll these dice and hopefully get less than three. We didn't even get close to less than three. So he is going to get take one damage from that. Now, it says down here we have to attack again with two white dice. So again, we're going to roll and we need a get less than a three. And we got a three exactly. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> so he has taken two damage just from this horror event. Now we're going to move on to Jesse. 
And poor old Jesse, he only has two. His armor is not going to help him because it doesn't help against an arcane attack. So we need to get less than a two. I don't think that's happening. We got a three. That's enough to hit him. Now we have to hit him again. Oh, this card is a bunch of barf. All right. And then we roll again. Oh, he got to hit two. That's almost enough to get it by, but it's not. So he's got hit twice. Both our characters have taken two points of damage because of this barf card right here. This shivers. Wow, what a terrible card. So Jesse's going to go from five down to three, and Artemis is going to go from four to two. Wow, he's getting really close to death. We just started. Wow, this is amazing. All right, so none of this is what I predicted was going to happen, which is really cool about this game. Sometimes your best laid plans never actually come to fruition, and you got to think on the fly. Well, there isn't any flying right now. This thing flies. That's about it. But it actually doesn't have anything to do with movement. He's going to go activate first because he's first in line on the track. So if we look at him, he has his for stamina. So he's going to go ahead and move one, two towards the person with the least amount of health. One, two, Jesse has more health. So one, two, he's going to move down here. Now, believe it or not, that's actually good because then our Biaki, who has four stamina as well, is also going to be moving towards the person with the least amount of health. Now, even though it's showing flying here, it doesn't say anything about how he's able to fly over anything. So he's still going to move just like every other monster. Though if he had flight, he could probably fly over this pit or something. He's going to move one, two, and he can't move past these people, so he's stuck right there, which actually might not be too bad because Artemis can maybe just equip his spear and take out one of these guys. Then this guy's going to teleport here. Oh, it's just going to be bad everywhere. He's way out of the fight. He wasn't supposed to be out of the fight as much as he is. That's okay, though. He can come back one, two, three, four, and he can maybe take this guy out. Probably not. It's got five defense. All right, we'll figure something out. We're going to move into our hero's turn. So the first thing we need to do is reset our stamina back to six, and we have to decide who is going to go first. So now I think Artemis is going to go first, mainly because he has his power down here. He is able to attack with Arcane. Arcane attack with the worst dice, and I have to reduce the attack by one this round. So every time I use it, it becomes worse. Now, of course, I could move. That's another option I can do with him using his essence, but I kind of want to keep the essence. We're going to move him first. I think that's going to be our best bet. All right, I'm going to try to be super tricky. I'm going to move one over to here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to go ahead and use his ability because it has a range of two. So if we look right here, it says arcane attack range two, and I can go ahead and fire this thing. And I have to use two stamina in order to do it. So Artemis hopefully is going to save the day here. So now to do this little maneuver, I have to move one and then pay two to use his little spell here. Now this is only going to be one white die, but who knows, this might be enough to get him. Come on, I need a two or better. Oh, I got the two. Yes. All right. So here's what's going to happen. Oh, this is awesome. Okay. This is exactly what I wanted. He's only got two armor in for, against Arcane. He's only got two will. He's already taken one health, so he's going to take another health and he's going to die. Now it says right here, when this monster dies, it attacks three to adjacent units. It doesn't say anything about explorers, so this can affect his own guy. That's going to be awesome. Now, we have to remember we killed him because there's things that happen when you kill a monster that you're going to be able to gain things for. So if we look at our Biaki here, which he does have five defense against physical attacks, but hey, a free attack is better than nothing. So I get three white dice in order to maybe get this guy. Let's see if we can do anything to him. We only got a three. We did nothing to him. That's okay. It was a free attack. It was would have been fun if we would have got him. But alas, we did not kill him. So here's our destroy monster rule. It says if the monster's health points are reduced to zero or if the monster is on top of a pit space, then it is destroyed. It's going to resolve any of its when this monster dies ability, which is why we gone, went ahead and used our when this monster dies ability, which is awesome. Sadly, it didn't do anything. Next, it says if the monster is destroyed during an explorer's turn, restore one essence to that explorer. If the destroyed monster's level is lower than the current monster level, it is not a level four monster. Remove its card figure from the game. Otherwise, we're going to place it on top of the destroyed monster deck face up, and we're going to set aside the monster figure. So like it said, we're going to go ahead and gain one essence. Next, we're going to go ahead and put him in the destroyed monster section 
face up and we're gonna remove his figure from the board and I'm just gonna go ahead and put the standee back on top of our standee pile we have right here. So when you find it, if we ever come across him again, we'll have it ready to go. Now, the only other thing we have to resolve is our Biaki's ability here, which states, when a monster dies, this monster teleports to the monster's position. So I have to take care of that right now. So that means he's gonna teleport right to this space right here. Now we're not done, we still have three stamina left. So far this turn's going pretty good. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this door. Yeah, I'm gonna be tricky. Here's our door, we're gonna go ahead and close it, which means we're gonna pay two stamina to go ahead and put our closed door right there. Now you might ask, what is that gonna do for us? This monster won't be able to get to us because it actually has to break through the door before it's able to get to our brave explorer. Now I will go ahead and read you how to use a door. It does say to open or close a door, you use two stamina. And if the door is open, close it by placing a closed door figure on it. If the door is open, you're gonna, or if it's closed, you can go ahead and open it again for two stamina. Now the good thing is it's gonna take four stamina for this thing to break down that door. So I think we're gonna be in pretty good shape here. Now, of course, opening that or closing that door costs us two stamina. I still have one stamina left, but I really don't think there's anything I wanna do. It cost me three to put my spear back on. So we're just gonna stop him right there. It would take me two to do any of these other things. So that's the end of Artemis. We're gonna move into Jesse's turn. Oh, and there's Jesse. He's so far away from the action. So this is gonna be one, two away from him. One, one, two. I'm gonna move one, two to right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and use another chest because I'm really looking for some good stuff. I gotta find a way to get this guy. Now, of course, I could probably use an arcane attack against him because he only has two will, but I need to hit him a lot in order to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and look for some, hopefully some better weapons. So we're gonna go ahead and grab two items. I'm gonna grab another apparel because if something to grab is terrible, at least I can maybe equip that. And we're gonna grab a weapon. So let's see what we found. We have found oh, one of these. The Shredders. Oh, I wonder if the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are around the corner. Oh, guess not. Okay. It says remove an adjacent door token for four stamina. I don't think that's going to be good. But of course, I can equip this uh, because it is going to be able to link with our, uh, what is these, apparel that we have over there as well. So we're going to put those over here and let's see if we got a weapon finally. Oh, what's this? Force Alternator. Increase armor and will by one this round. Decrease armor and will by one this round. Arcane attack. Oh, I can do arcane attacks. Oh, I think we're totally going to take this thing. This looks really good. Two stamina, three range to do a 1-1 one, one arcane attack. And I can spend two at a range of three to increase armor and will or decrease armor and will. That's going to be really good. Okay, we're going to get rid of the shredders. That's too bad. Maybe we'll find some splinters later. Okay, we're going to put those up there and we're going to go ahead and take this. Now, again, of course, this goes in our inventory. I can't equip it yet. So I'm gonna place it right up here, and I think I know what's gonna be equipped and what's not. Now, of course, these are both one-handed weapons, so I could equip both of these, and I probably will, just so I have one I can attack with arcane and one that I attack without. Now, of course, to do all that, it costs me one, two to move, and then it costs one, two, three to perform our search the chest action. So we're out of stamina. Both our characters are done. We're gonna to have to move into the spawn phase. But before we do, of course, I have to put an explored token out on the board on that chest. Oh, I think it was this one back here I said. That chest. This one I think I want to save because I can get that on the way down. So to roll if we see a monster, we're going to go ahead and start with Artemis again first. He rolls. He got a five, which is not enough to move the track. I should say, I mean, it is enough to move the track. We don't spawn a monster. It goes down to five. It was at a six. So now we have to roll for Jesse. And Jesse's gonna see what he gets. Hopefully nothing. Oh, we got a 10. All right, here comes another monster. Wow, I just keep finding monster after monster. I guess that's what this game's all about. So we're gonna go ahead and reset our track back to seven. And we're gonna spawn our next monster. So let's see what vile creature comes to fight us now. We have found a, what is this? I'm not even gonna try yet at the end. Okay, I tried. <laughs> it says we've got two armor, one, four arcane, only one health. Oh, I think we could get this guy. He has five stamina. Let's see what he does. For two stamina and a range of three, he has an arcane attack of three. Wow, he's gonna be absolutely ridiculous. When this monster dies, the attacker gains an item. When the monster is the only monster, it is ethereal. Oh, that's terrible. So this is a really sad rule. Ethereal or ethereal, however you pronounce that, he is means I can't target him directly. I could target him indirectly, for example, 
traps or exploding barrels or pushing him into some, or if he were to fall into a pit or something, that's how you could kill him. But if he's, if you go to attack him with an item or a weapon or something that doesn't have that trait, you can't actually attack him. So let's go ahead and find his standee. I'm sure it's in here somewhere. It's got to be. He's right here. Okay, the good news is, is this Biaki is actually on the board, and we actually need him to stay there until we're able to take this guy out. So we're going to put a little standee on him, and we're also going to give him his health chip, and it's going to go right here. Now let's put a standee up on here and put him on the board. Wow, there he is, right there, ready to go get us. So Jesse, our wonderful gunman, is going to have a spawn, and he could either spawn here or here, whichever is closest to Jesse. And just, this is one, two, three, one, two, three. They're equidistance. I believe that means I'm able to choose. I am gonna have him go right here because Jesse's planning to come down this way. If I put him up here, I would have to go out of my way to go and kill this guy before I could kill this guy because if, if we don't kill this thing while this is on the board, it'll be really tough to get this guy. So that's the spawn phase. We're gonna move into the horror phase. And right now our horror rating is at four. So we're gonna go ahead and roll the die and see what we get. We got a t <laughs> I think I might pick a different die. I keep rolling tens. All right, we have to take care of a horror event. Now the first thing we have to do is move up our threat to four. We're up to four on threat, wow. And now we have to draw a horror event. Let's see what we find. Overrun, oh, I <laughs> here I thought it couldn't get any worse than shivers. Overrun, it says, a breeze danced and swirled mesmerizingly around us moving forward until it reached the place where our enemies came forth in endless droves. The air grew ominously still as it neared its destination and was replaced by a disquieting glow that emanated from those dreaded spawning points. I have to repeat the spawn phase. Oh my gosh, that's even worse than this one. Okay, let's go do a spawn phase. So right now our spawn track's at seven. Let's hope it goes to five at the end of this. So we're gonna go ahead and roll with Artemis first. Artemis has rolled a two. So now we're gonna go ahead and drop our spawn rating down to six. Oh, we really need to roll low again. Next is gonna be Jesse. He's gonna go ahead and roll. Oh, no, you rolled another 10. This is absolutely ridiculous. Too many tens. So we're gonna go ahead and move our spawn rating back up to seven, that's awesome. So now let's see what dreaded monster we get. This is just out of control. We found, what is this? Moon Beast. It has four armor, three <laughs> uh, will. We got a, only one health and five stamina. All right, and it can attack melee, two black, two white, but it takes three in order to do that. Now, down here it says it can pull two spaces a two with a range of three, oh, that's gonna be terrible as well. Oh my gosh. When this monster is adjacent to a wall, it gains ethereal, oh no, all right. <laughs> this is awesome. All right, so this might be the shortest playthrough in history, but we're gonna go ahead and put a health token on him. And then we're gonna have to go ahead and find him. He's right here and we're gonna put him on a little stand and we're gonna put him on the board. So again, I can spawn this at the closest spawn point to Jesse and it's one, two, three or one, two, three. I'm gonna spawn him up here. I have enough to deal with down here. I think giving me a turn with that guy up there might be our best bet. All right, so the horror phase is done. Our event phase is, or spawning phase is done. Now it's our monsters turn. We've got three monsters on the board. Now we have to go in order. The first one is our Bayaki. It's got four stamina and it's gonna to move towards our closest person and it needs two to attack melee. Now, the interesting thing is, is he can only move one, two towards me, but he can't get through the door. So he's gonna have to spend, that's his entire turn, he can't actually attack anything because in order to take down a door, he needs four stamina. So next turn, this thing's gonna be breaking that door down. Moving on to our next creature, we have this guy. We've got Yada, that's how I'm gonna talk about this guy. He is gonna be able to make an arcane attack at two, three range for two endurance or two stamina points and he's got five. So he can't see me right now. So he's gonna have to move one, two, and I don't know if he's able to see over that. I am not exactly sure, I apologize. I believe those are still obstacles. So I think he's gonna have to move adjacent to me in order to actually attack me. I'll have to check. So all of these are obstacles. 
Now, obstacles are considered impassable space that does not block line of sight. So that means he will be able to shoot at Jesse. So let's go ahead and take a look at him yet again. He needs two stamina for a range of three to fire with a three attack arcane attack. Now he was here, he's gonna move one and one, two, three, that's enough. He doesn't have to move any farther than that. One, two, three, yeah, he can shoot him from right there. That's fantastic. So he's gonna be able to shoot him twice. Oh, look at this. He can attack twice with this attack. Oh, that's gonna be brutal. Now our valiant hero, Jesse here, only has a two willpower. He's not even able to use his armor to protect himself. So this evil dude here, Yada, he's gonna attack with these, I apologize, I know I'm, I'm I just don't think I'm gonna go, Yadithan, Yadithan. I brutalized his name, I apologize. We're gonna go ahead and roll three white dice. Now I have to get a one on these in order for him not to take damage. Well, that didn't happen, <laughs> he took damage. So then he's gonna have to roll again because he's still got two more stamina. He's got five stamina total, this is ridiculous. All right, he rolls again, yep, he hit again. So Jesse has taken two more damage. So Jesse has taken two damage, he's taken one, two, he's down to one health. Now one thing I could do is I could use my essence, which I think I'm going to, to prevent one of the damage, meaning I'm back to two. Now I'm, don't, I used all my stamina already, that was from the last turn. I, no, I'm just dropping to zero. So we only have one health, two health left before we're done with Jesse. This is out of control. So now our last person to activate is our moon beast. Look at this guy. Oh, he looks freaky. All right, he's going to go ahead and move and then try to attack me or try to pull me. He's got five stamina. Now to get to Jesse, it's going to cost him one, two, three, four, five stamina, this six to get there or else one, two, three, four. So he's going to come one, two, three, four. And he's going to be getting right next to him and then he's gonna be able to attack next turn. Oh, he might try to pull me. One, two, one, two, three. I think he's gonna be able to pull me because he can move two and then for two stamina, three range, he can pull me two spaces. One, two up here. I think that's what he's gonna do. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments below, but I believe that's what he's going to do. He's gonna pull me next to him so he can get me next turn. Well, actually, hopefully I can get him. That's gonna be the plan. All right, he's gone and gone his done his thing. Now it's our... <laughs> Explorer's turns, I don't really know what we're even gonna do. So we're gonna go ahead and put all our stamina back to six. Now, there's some interesting things that could happen here. I've got an arcane attack from him and I've got a regular attack from him. So if things go decently well, we might be able to take out hopefully at least one of these monsters. Now sadly, I can't get any of my weapons equipped because it's gonna cost me three to do it and that's way too much from what I need to actually try to do to these monsters. And yes, I should have never thrown this spear. That was a bad call. So the first person that's gonna go is Jesse. I've got a plan. Now, I need to take this guy out. This is my biggest fear right now. I'm not too worried about this. If I do kill this, he is going to teleport to that spare space, not the end of the world. So he's gonna move one, two, and he's gonna to try to shoot him with that ability he has. So Jesse is going to use two of his stamina to go ahead and use this ability. It allows me to attack with one white die. And we need to go ahead and hit this guy. He has a two armor, so that means I need to roll a two on this die. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, I did it, I got the two, that's awesome. All right, so he has hit him. He only has one health. So he's gonna go ahead and lose his health chip, meaning he's dead. And it says when this monster dies, attacker gains an item. So we're gonna go ahead and resolve that. And it says when this monster is the only monster, that didn't happen, he's gonna be removed. So we're gonna place him right here into the discard pile. We're gonna put his evil token bat on top here. I don't wanna deal with this guy again. That guy was bad news. And now we're gonna go ahead and attacker gains item. So attacker gains item. And it sounds like I'm only able to get an item, but that's not what it is. It's actually a rule. Gains item is a rule. It's basically the same as using your chest action. You get to choose two and keep one and you can choose to put it back on top or destroy it. We've got some weapons now. We're gonna go with apparel and we're gonna go with one of these consumables. The consumable we got is Phonetic Venom. Attack one, increase attacks rolls by one, three this round, or I can get this apparel, which is Leather holster, equipped range, equip ranged weapon for only one, upgrade or augment equipped range weapon for one. I believe that means that I can equip range weapons for one. I think that's really good. Now, sadly, it doesn't give me any defense. I was really hoping for defense. Or we could take our venom here. Attack one. 
increase attack rolls by three. So I think I use one black die, but I could increase all my attack rolls by three. It costs me an essence to use. So, hmm, I don't think I really want that. I do think I want this. We're going to go ahead, and since he's this is his class card, he's able to equip this. So this is going to go right here. It's going to attach right like there, like it does. So those things are nicely together like that. They're good to go. Now I do have to remove my stamina. One, two to move, and then two more to fire. Now I still have two stamina with Jesse. Let's see what we can do. Now, sadly, I don't have a ranged weapon, or I could equip it for one, which is pretty awesome. Now, the only thing is I'm not sure about this item because its attack is a range. So I, is this considered a ranged weapon? The attack is a ranged attack. And all these are ranged. I believe this is a ranged weapon, so I believe I can equip this for one because of my leather holster. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments below. Equip ranged weapon. So I'm gonna go ahead and equip it for one stamina, why not? So we're gonna equip this. Now, of course, I can't use it because it costs me two to actually fire, but that's equipped now, which is gonna help me out. I've still got one left, I'm gonna go ahead and move. Now, this guy had to teleport to his square because that's the way his character works. This Biaki is just bouncing all over the place. It says right down here, when any monster dies, this monster teleports to the monster's position. So he's gonna go right there. So we're going to go ahead and drop him one for using that leather holster that's right there. And then he's going to use one for moving. Now he also gained an essence for killing that monster. And that's it for Jesse. So we're going to move on to Artemis. Now, sadly, I was going to have Artemis actually try to take this guy out, but I don't think that's going to happen now. He's actually probably going to have to use an equip action to get that spear re-equipped to himself. And then maybe we'll go after this guy next turn. So I'm going to go ahead and open this door for two even though I shut it, but it saved me. And then we're gonna move one. No, I think we're gonna move one right here. I think that's gonna be a better bet because that way he'll go after him. Oh, actually they're, they're tied in health right now. So they'll go after, he'll go after whichever one I want. So I'm gonna move right here. They're both equidistant to this guy. So I get to choose because they both only have two health left. So Artemis opened the door for one, two, then he moved one and now he's gonna use a one, two, three and equip item or the use inventory action, he's gonna go ahead and re-equip his heavy javelin. I am never throwing it again. I'm <laughs> never ever throwing this again. I'd rather just go up and attack things with it. So we have to move into our spawn phase and it's still at a seven here. So hopefully we don't roll a seven, eight or nine. So we're gonna start with Artemis this time. He's gonna go ahead and roll. And you rolled a four, did you see that it was almost a 10 again? This dice is cursed. I'm never using this one again after this. <laughs> I can't believe how many tens I've rolled. So we're gonna go ahead and lower this by one. Now I need a five or lower. Now Jesse's turn. Let's see what happens to him. And he got a three. Okay, good. No monsters this turn. This is absolutely exactly what we needed. So again, we're going to move our spawn rating down one. So we're going to move into the horror phase and I really need this not to activate. That double spawn phase last time was absolutely barf-tastic. So we're going to go ahead and roll. I need to get a three or less. Oh, they got a three. Absolutely nothing happened this turn. That's so good. So we're gonna go ahead and move our tracker down to three. And now we're gonna be moving into the monster phase. So the first person that's gonna activate is gonna be our Biaki. He's got four stamina and he has an ability here with two stamina at a melee range. He can attack with three black dice. Oh, it's gonna be absolutely brutal. Now I get to choose who he attacks because it goes after the person with the least amount of health. Actually, the least amount of health is still going to be, I believe it's going to be Jesse. Jesse's going to get attacked, and he's the guy I want to get attacked anyway. He's got the most defense. He's actually got five defense against this. So we're going to go ahead and roll the dice. So our Biaki here rolls three black dice. Now Jesse does have some armor. He has this that gives him two armor right here. And he automatically starts with three armor in his character. So this need roll needs to actually be higher than a five to even do any damage. And it got a one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that was just enough to hit him again. All oh, these monsters are getting so lucky. So he's gonna go ahead and go down to one health. Wow, this is so terrifying. Now, one thing I forgot is I got attacked by those arcane attacks and sadly I forgot when you are hit, attacker loses one stamina. I shouldn't have gotten double smacked by this guy right here. I actually allowed him to attack me twice. He shouldn't have been able to do that, but that's okay. That's my fault. I missed it. 
I'm going to take the damage now, and now we're going to have to move into our Moon Beast. Now our final monster that's going to activate is our Moon Beast. Check this guy out. He's got five stamina. Now he's got two abilities down here. One is he can attack with a black and white die if he's in melee range using three stamina. He also has a pull two spaces. And this is going to cost him two stamina with a three range. Now, if we look at our character here, I'm one, two, three, four squares away, so he can't pull me. Now, if I move one square up, he is then within three, and he could pull me. But he's pulling me over this event space here. I don't think he can do that because technically this is an impassable space, but it doesn't have anything to do with targeting. So he could target through it, but I don't think he can pull me back through it. Let me know in the comments below if what to do about that situation. I'm actually going to move him one, two, three square, so he's next to me instead. But that only leaves him with two stamina, and his attack is going to take him three stamina to do. So he's not going to be able to attack me this round. Otherwise, if not, he's going to be able to pull me back here. But I believe he's just going to move up just like that. And that is going to be the end of our monster phase. So we're going to move back into our explorer phase, and we're going to get back our six stamina. We're going to need it because we got a lot we got to do this round. But before we take any of our actions, this is where we're going to stop for now. We're still in Chapter 1. I can't seem to get enough essence to actually activate our space here without having to deal with all these monsters. It's absolutely amazing what can happen inside this game. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the playthrough. And if you do, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that bell symbol so you know when part two will be coming. And also, please leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. Do you think that Jesse and Artemis will have what it takes to get at least through chapter one inside our scenario, Horror in the Ice? To find out, I need you to meet me at the co-op shop.